Welcome to the Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Quality Improvement. This is Lecture A. The objectives for this lecture are to describe strategies for quality improvement and describe the role of leadership in quality improvement. Remember the IOM defined quality of care as the degree to which health services for individuals and populations increase the likelihood of desired health outcomes and are consistent with current professional knowledge. Quality improvement is a method of evaluating and improving processes of patient care, which emphasizes a multidisciplinary approach to problem solving and focuses not on individuals, but systems of patient care, which might be the cause of variations. Quality improvement methods can be used to improve health outcomes of all types and sizes. Some examples of quality improvement projects. Redesigning a clinical office, reducing the time for patient intake, and redesigning the information flow in a laboratory. Increasing access to care, for example, by increasing the percentage of time patients can get same-day visits when needed. The Putting Quality into Practice video series emerged as part of a larger project that documented physician engagement in quality improvement projects. The series demonstrates the effects of workflow, resource, and systems reviews electronic medical records, EMRs, implementation, and other quality improvement efforts on a practice. In the video, physicians describe their quality improvement process, including the following. Motivation and first steps. Systems, measurement, and tools. External resources, and barriers and solutions. This series is an eight-part series that plays in a loop. There was approximately 60 minutes of video. The series was produced by the ABIM Foundation, a nonprofit foundation. Pause the slides and click on the HTTP link to listen to this video. Pause the slides now. In the National Roundtable on Healthcare Qualities, the Urgent Need to Improve Healthcare Quality, the Institute of Medicine highlighted the deficiencies in the U.S. healthcare system. This is the ultimate improvement project and the reason for the current emphasis on HIT implementation and process improvement. An example of this in action is the Duke Data Bank for Cardiovascular Disease, created through the vision of Dr. Eugene Stead, chair of the Duke Department of Medicine from 1946 to 1967. His vision was that the computer be used hospital-wide as a computerized textbook of medicine replacing a doctor's fallible memory of how to treat a condition or disease with a computer's infallible memory of each patient treated in the hospital. The Duke Data Bank for Cardiovascular Disease, Overview, ND. The data bank ultimately became a major part of a cycle of care improvement that started with identifying problems from aggregate data, testing ideas for improvement, including in clinical trials, incorporating that new knowledge into the medical literature and eventually into new care guidelines, adherence of which could then be measured through the data bank. In a keynote address presented at the Texas Heart Institute Symposium, Evolving Standards in Cardiovascular Care, What Have We Learned? Where Are We Going? Califf, 2005. Dr. Robert Califf added three major key concepts to the thinking of the cycle of bench to bedside for performance measures. He said, first we do the clinical trials. Then we develop guidelines from what the clinical trials showed. Clinical practice guidelines, if properly constructed, provide the evidence to show which of our options is the most effective in a particular clinical situation. Then, in order to be sure that we are exercising the best option, we have to be able to measure what we are doing. And finally, we close the loop by providing education and feedback to the practicing community. If we are successful in all of this, outcomes can improve. He presented three key concepts shown in the slide. The first is that quality is a measurable entity. The Institute of Medicine has defined quality in terms of six dimensions. Is it safe, effective, timely, patient-centered, efficient, and equitable? It's no longer enough to provide quality in your own individual clinical universe, because that universe overlaps other areas. Patients are exposed to a variety of practitioners and environments during an episode of care. 
So the responsibility for quality includes proper coordination across practices. The second concept is safety, with safety now defined in terms of freedom from error. Errors are definable and measurable. An error is defined as having the wrong plan or failing to execute the right plan. The third concept is something that is really being stressed by the Institute of Medicine this year, accountability. Obviously, we must then have systems in place to document that what we are doing is the right thing. And this brings us back to the need for efficient and accurate HIT systems. Goethe, considered by many to be the most important writer in the German language and one of the most important thinkers in Western culture, stated that knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. Quality improvement enables us to move from the knowledge presented in the 1999 report by the Institute of Medicine, which estimated that 98,000 or more people die annually in the U.S. due to medical errors to doing the improvement which must be done. Cone, 2000. For this lecture, it is important to focus on where we are in the process redesign. In previous lectures in this component, you have been introduced to concepts and practices that will enable you to identify the processes that control how a healthcare process is working, collect and analyze information about processes in the healthcare setting, and redesign the workflow processes and streamline this redesign. This unit will introduce you to quality improvement methods and tools that enable practitioners to collect and compile information on an ongoing basis, analyze the information for root causes, make decisions on how to eliminate these problems, process improvement, change processes based on this analysis and redesign, strategic change, and set timetables for these steps. For purposes of this class, we will review a limited number of QI methods and tools that the analyst may encounter in the healthcare setting. We will briefly compare and contrast the quality improvement methodologies and tools and their appropriate uses in the healthcare setting. In 2004, Stephen Shortell likened the U.S. healthcare system to a shoddily constructed building located in the pathway of an impending natural disaster. Ransom, 2004. And many have noted in the last few years that quality can be improved in the healthcare setting by understanding the foundations and methods of quality improvement. The analysts are likely to see many of these methods as they move through the healthcare arena. It is important to recognize what the methods are and where to find additional information. It is not the intent of this lecture to teach one how to perform the quality improvement. Three of the primary thought leaders who form the foundation of quality improvement are Walter Schuhart, W. Edwards Deming, and Joseph M. Duran. In ensuring the reliability of the national system of telephone exchanges and the production of the telephone, Schuhart used his knowledge of statistics to design a tool, the control chart, in 1924, to guide change actions in response to statistical variation. His other contributions included operational definitions, ensuring that common operations were used to define what was measured. Ransom, 2004. Deming, also a statistician, used his knowledge gained from working with Schuhart and others to develop a theory of improvement and a system of profound knowledge in the 1970s. He described this system as an understanding of four components. One, variations. Schuhart's influence. Two, theory of knowledge. Three, appreciation for a system. Four, psychology and the interactions between the components. Ransom, 2005. Edward Deming derived what became known as the Deming Wheel, Deming Cycle, or Deming Circle from Walter Schuwert's 1939 straight line, three step scientific process of specification, production, and inspection. Deming presented it as a circle to stress the importance of constant interaction among the four steps of design, production, sales, and research. The PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle, is often attributed to Deming and Schuert, but Deming has denied this connection. However, in 1993, 
Deming presented an evolved version of the cycle as the Schuert cycle for learning and improvement as a method for improving a product or process and called it the PDSA Plan Do Study Act cycle. Moen, 2011. This concludes Lecture A of Quality Improvement. In this lecture, we introduced high level strategies for quality improvement to point you to areas for further learning. We discussed the need for aggressive quality improvement in healthcare, and we described the role of leadership in creating a culture that supports QI. A good starting point and resource for learning how to apply the strategies, methods, and tools introduced in this lecture is the American Society for Quality, ASQ, at asq.org.